Computers in Society, CIT 101. Summary of Computers in Society, CIT 101. Brief Introduction. Computers can be used to learn or comprehend the understanding of all subjects, be it physics, aerobics, swimming, biology, mathematics, agriculture, chemistry, business administration, or commerce, just to name a few. In education, computers are used to project information to individuals in the classrooms or anywhere education is taking place, in churches, homes, schools, conference halls, and so on. It is also used to convey the logic of a subject or behind a topic. Computers play an important role in educating our mind. There are various types of computers in today's global market. The first calculating device was invented by Charles Babbage, a mathematician, and this device is known as the abacus which led to the invention of computers. If one looks immensely at what we mean by computers or what computers are, one may say that all entities of the world are computers. The inventions of computers are based on inferences and inductive thinking. Without human knowledge, computers cannot function. We as human beings depend on computers to perform sophisticated tasks that we cannot perform, and somehow one has to instruct or program the computer to carry out or perform our desired functions. We have computers of centuries ago and computers of today, and those of the future in progress. Actually, there are two types of computers come to functionality. We have analog and digital computers. Digital computers may be termed electronic devices, they are computers without fluidity. They function with the flow of the atmosphere whereas analog types of computers depend on the physical attributes of the atmosphere. Differentiating analog and digital computers, most analog computers are of age, they are built more than two to four centuries ago whereas digital computers are the modern version. This is not to say that digital computers had not been in existence years ago. There are generations of computers that are up to six or more generations. Computers are extensions of the mind physically and mentally. Analog computers could be considered to be mental or analogy entities and digital computers to be physical or visual or literary entities. Basically, analog computers are the types of computers that solve problems intrinsically by leaving the solutions afloat. With analog computers, one has to use deductive rather than inductive thinking to arrive at a final or desired solution. In contrast, digital computers give one the actual solution or direct answer. We also have computers that are combinations of analog and digital in modern society. These types of computers are embedded computers such as refrigerators, microwave ovens, cars, and bathroom scales, just to name a few. Modern uses of computers in the society. Nowadays, the uses or applications of computers are becoming more rampant and ludicrous in terms of their simplicities and sophistication in all fields of science, engineering, business, and arts. The coming age would definitely mandate the knowledge of the use of computers because of the innovation of technology, as the world changes. Using computers for business, although many businesses use computers to solve business problems and to make decisions, we still need to formulate how to interpret the business solutions from these computers. Some computers of today allow managers and employees to formulate mathematical algorithms that are used to resolve problems or make decisions. In the banking industries for example computers are used to calculate or process customers' transactions, and in the insurance companies, computers are used for projections and annuity calculations. Many large businesses depend on the use of computers to survive in the world today. The benefits of using computers to solve problems outweigh their risks. To solve a problem, we must first formulate the problem by creating algorithms or formulas and then use our intuitions to manipulate, solve or process the data or the information relating to the problem. Scientific application of computers. Computers are used by scientists for many scientific functions. They are used for predictions and solving problems of physical and non-physical entities or scenarios. They can be used for example to derive the amount of intake of oxygen in species in a period of time for example. Scientists applied computers in the same manner as a businessman and technicians or engineers. The creation of scientific computers has made life easier for mankind. The use of computers to solve scientific problems has made the world a better place to explore various ways of doing things and surviving on Earth. Technology applications of computers. The use of computers is very common in engineering. For example, in the designs of bridges, automobiles, robots, houses, and so on, just to mention a few. An example of the usage of computers by engineers in building a bridge is to find the capacity and the length of the proposed bridge by measurement. In manufacturing automobiles, for example, engineers may use computers to predict how fast they would like an automobile to travel and the amount of gas it will consume or use before even manufacturing the automobile. 
Also, robots which can be classified as some kinds of computers are now being used to assemble parts in the automobile industry and some other kinds of manufacturing industries. The technology application of computers is sophisticated because it requires using agents of water that constitutes the computer itself. The implementation of all aspects of computers dwells on substance or problem. Durability of computers. It is believed that there will never be a cease to the existence of computers. As long as the world is in place then computers will be in place. Actually, the longevity of the attributes of computers is the homogeneity of their performance and physical attributes. As we continue to use computers and innovate technology, computer performance will continue to increase. To prolong the existence of computers, we as humans must devote our time to exploring all possible uses or applications of computers. The present entities are actually derived from the past and the present and past entities will continue to yield entities of the future. Computers are the fundamentals of human existentialism. Without computers, we as a society may not continue to survive. The long haul of producing computers that are complex will lead to their conservation and improvement. Computers will always be in our midst no matter what the circumstances may be. The manufacturing of the future generations of computers rests in the hand of the beholders. Individuals in society will have to be responsible for the connotations attached to the development of computers as tools for human perseverance and human embodiment. Computers serve as the tools of the era, and the future of computers remains enlightened and positive. Physical and memory attributes. Computers consist of peripherals as physical attributes. The physical attributes of computers are referred to as hardware. Hardware may be termed as tangible physical components of the computer. The physical attributes depend on the main core of the computer to function as a whole. Without the physical components or attributes, there will be no computers, and without the memory attributes, the physical component will not function properly. The components rely on the command issued by the memory of the computers. The difference between the physical attributes of computers and memory is that physical attributes are tangible whereas memory attributes are intangible. Both the memory attributes and physical attributes depend on each other. They both work together to accomplish a function. The memory attributes are referred to as the central processor and arithmetic logic unit. The processor, CPU, is the central processing unit that performs all the processing of information. Part of the CPU is the arithmetic logical unit, which performs all calculations, everything that involves calculations. The CPU can be referred to as the core of the system. The physical attributes are components such as wires, printers, disk drives, USB, tape drives, telephones, diskettes, disks, or any part of the computer that one can touch. Conclusion The early building of personal computers is the episode of the discovery curve. There was an opportunity for growth within the industry. It seems there were no problems that could really undermine the development of personal computers. Starting a business should be considered by the experienced management team as the development of computers evolves. The expertise of management would carry the developments and innovations of computers through profitable years. The problems of direct and indirect competition are worth taking into consideration when developing computers because of the differentiations of computer units and services from competitors. The price of computers should be below the average price of other products. Since home lobbyists or households are the primary targets in the computer industry, it may make sense to focus on having a reduced or low price. The offering of additional business or services such as programming, consulting, training, education, and maintenance must be a competitive advantage if profitability is the main goal of success. When consumers realize that such perks or services are available, then it will encourage them to remain loyal customers. Users' friendliness, quality of service, and affordability would contribute to success. The sales of computers may fluctuate from season to season. For example, if about 200 products the units were sold to the educational market during the summer season and about 250 units are sold during the winter season, Christmas holidays. The increase in sales may be due to the fact that those who engage or participate in activities were interested in purchasing units for themselves after their involvement in computer activities in the summer. Since computers are everywhere, there is a market for computers because the learning aspects of do-it-yourself are being made aware of. Therefore the market opportunity does exist. In order to penetrate the market, more will have to be spent on the advertisement of computers and their peripherals in educational magazines and periodicals. The distribution of computers from direct sales channels to consumers will be a good idea. But it can be the reverse, that is, from retail to consumers. Computers are essential commodities in society because they tend to make one's life easy. Most functions that cannot be performed by humans are performed by computers. The basis for using computers is to extend the human mind beyond the normal process. 
Computers have come of ages, they have come in different sizes and they perform sophisticated tasks no matter what sizes they are physical. What really matters is the size of the computer memory to accommodate all the functions that need to be performed.